Hello and welcome back. I'm Melinda Bigley and I'm a baby lock educator. And today I wanted to show you guys a little bit about what you can do on a baby lock serger. I am using the baby lock triumph and it is an eight thread, um, fabulous, fabulous machine. I hadn't surged up until about, I guess last February. And um, that was partially because I thought really the only thing you could do with the serger was to serge clothing, which I wasn't and still I'm not very interested in. But that was far from the truth. Um, what you can do with a serger is virtually anything. And it opens up a whole new world of thread, which is for those of us that love everything sewing and stitching, thread is um, a really exciting way to create your project in a different way. Um, in fact, today what I want to show you guys is actually a wave stitch. And you can see, if you guys can see it on this, this binding right here, that's actually a wave stitch. And I'm sure in the camera you can, you can see that there are uh, a couple different colors. But I will show you how to do that. And the key to getting a wave stitch um, sewn properly is just a couple little things. Um, so I'm gonna move you over to the serger and uh, show you what, what those little things are. So I'm gonna cover the camera so you don't get seasick. And then adjust your height so that you see well. So I've got the, like I said, the Triumph. And um, what I ended up doing was getting, also getting the Koala Serger Station and uh, Baby Lock slash Taconi Corporation, which is uh, what Baby Lock is actually called. Um, they also sell Koala. We have a contra, I think uh, there's, there's some business things that are joined, it, joined, joined it, that are joint with those, uh, with that company. So, um, fabulous tables. And I've also got the Koala for my, um, my Solaris. Okay, so one of the things, like I mentioned, that is um, a fabulous portion, I'm trying to get this thread undone because it's never been used, is a, is a really neat selling point for um, sergers is the ability to use thicker threads. So this is a 12 weight thread and it's actually by Wonderfill and it is absolutely spectacular thread. It really, um, it stands out far better than typical uh, 40 weight embroidery thread. And um, what these threads tend, where, where you generally run these, you can run them through the needles, but we run them through what's, what are called loopers, okay? So I am gonna find a pair of scissors, first of all, which are everywhere until I actually need them. Okay, so I'm gonna thread the lower looper first, and just to take you on a quick tour here of what we've got going on, we have got the lower looper, which starts right here. And if you have this machine, you can look at your, um, you can look at your guide, and actually you can't see that, can you? Okay, that's better. So this green thread is in the lower looper position right here, and it is actually going to thread up right into this second position right here, and that is actually labeled with an LL, so you know that's your lower looper. The neat thing about the lower looper is regardless of the stitch that you're trying to achieve, it is always threaded in that right side port right here. And um, that's pretty easy because in other stitches, you need to be aware of how you're threading. And the best way to do that is to keep these quick reference thread guides handy all the time. I laminated mine, I keep them. There's three pages front and back and um, they are excellent reference tools. I don't know how people would remember which way to thread things without it. Okay, so that's the lower looper, and I'm gonna just get these through the through this telescope first. 
So the back in the back section, and it's again, it's labeled, it's the upper looper. So I'm going to just run it through that little telescoping guide. And then with the, with the wave stitch, we're going to thread our um, O2 needle. So that is threaded right here. And again, you can look at your guides to see how exactly these, uh, where they sit. So what we're gonna do with our, our um, O2 needle is we're going to thread it on the far left. And with each stitch, you have, um, I'm gonna turn you back so you can see this portion. You can see with each stitch how it is actually, there's a diagram. So you've got, let's say, a, you know, in this case, you've got a blue, yellow, and green, and it shows you exactly how to thread these things. So it's very, very clear and very well done on Baby Lock's part. Move you over a little bit so you can see how the needle is threaded. So I'm gonna go through that little hook underneath this hook and up and over that metal, that plastic piece. And then I've got my O2 needle already in and that is also labeled on this little metal piece. I'm gonna wrap around in front and behind that little guide there. And sometimes that'll pop out while you're threading. Don't worry about that. You can always just pop it in whenever. Okay, so I'm gonna take my foot out so that you can see this better. When we are threading, we need to position our machines in threading so that it knows, our machines know they're being threaded, which allow us to use this air threading system. And I'll tell you, I absolutely, I, I enjoy threading my machine because it's fun. Okay, so that just gets it and then pulls it through for you and makes it far easier than trying to thread the needle when most of us can't see nearly well enough to do that. I have never been able to, and now I'm definitely not able to. Okay, so I don't know why that foot's not going on better. But, uh, so when we're, actually that's because this is, so when we are threading for our again for our loopers. I'm going to turn you back so you can see better on this. What we're going to do is thread the lower looper just like we would. And this portion of the upper looper is where it gets a little bit, it's not tricky, it's just a little bit different. So when you're cut, when you're using your thread, where, when you're about to thread, I generally take a fresh little clip at kind of an angle before I place this thread into the looper port. Okay, I'm going to place that right in the lower looper port, and I'm going to thread these separately. Generally, I would put both of them in at the same time, but I want you to see this more clearly. With this thread, you're going to pull it straight down to your knee so you know it's got enough room to be threaded through, and it pops right out this little portion right here. That's where the lower looper comes out. Okay, so now we're going to do the upper looper, and here's where it's a little bit different. Generally, you would run the upper looper through this guide right here. But in this case, we've got the O2 needle here, we've got our lower looper there, and we're gonna run the upper looper through this third section right here. So that's a little bit different. And this is because, again, we're doing the wave stitch. So I'm gonna play, pull that thread down just a little bit to a little bit farther than I would ordinarily. But again, that's because it has all this little space right here to, to uh, travel. So I'm gonna place the thread right in that little port for upper looper, it says U on it. And I'm just gonna give it a little bit of room in there and I'm gonna press thread. And actually this time I will give you a look at what it looks like when that thread pops out. Hopefully you can see that. You should see it pop out right over here. And if that happens, it means I didn't place that thread in far enough because that air has to grab onto it. So I'm just gonna give it a couple, a little bit longer and make sure it doesn't catch on anything. And it just pops right out that upper looper. Super fun, I love this. 
So I'm gonna get that out of the way of the foot and the blade. I tend to kind of keep my, my habits of being a quilter and move my thread off to the left. Um, okay, so now we're gonna set our machine up for the three thread uh, wave stitch. So right here, we've got all of our, rest. it's basically just a recipe that we're gonna follow. We're going to set the length for seven, it's 0.75 to 2.5. And the length is actually down, let's see if I can get you low enough. This is the length right here. So right, apparently last time I was doing a rolled wave. So I'm gonna place that at basically a little, about a little over one. Okay, and then this is the width. So the width it tells us is, let's see, five. So it's 5.0, which is all the way as far as you can turn it to the um, away from you. And then the next thing is our stitch selector. So I'm gonna move you over so you can see where the stitch selector is. And it's right here. And we're gonna bump that up to B. Okay, now we've got this overlock or wave. And in this case, we're doing a wave. So we're just gonna click that up to wave. And our upper looper selector is going to be up. So you're just gonna make sure your level, your lever is facing the up. And it tells you right there, super easy. And your blade is up and cutting. So we've got the blade right, right there, which that is this little knob right here. And if it, was, if it weren't up and cutting, you would turn it as far away from you as you can and it says lock. So we want that blade to be cutting. So we're gonna say unlock. So we're all set up and we've got our, uh, we, instead of having the other table on it, we've got our knife cover. So I'm gonna go ahead and close up and then we've, the what you don't, and you can't really forget this because the, if you see this cover won't close. And all we need to do is switch that back to surging and we are set to go. Now, when you thread, you want your foot lever up because that actually gets your thread into the tension guides properly. Okay, so I'm going to run some fabric so that you can see how simple it is to do a beautiful wave stitch. And I'm gonna take sort of weight, similarly weighted, weighted fabric. Actually, I'm gonna do just roll this in half. Now, one thing you do wanna remember when you're doing the wave stitch is you want like weighted thread in the loopers. That's just kind of a rule of thumb that I stick with. I learned that from other educators and it's, it's just a good idea. It gives you a much prettier look. And this will cut a little bit of your fabric if you allow it to do so. And then we're just gonna chain off and you end up with this gorgeous, beautiful wave stitch. It's just that simple. In the back, you can see that lower looper thread. And then in the front, you see the wave. So you've got your lower looper coming forward and you've got your upper looper showing as well. And that's why it's a wave, because it looks like a wave. So let's see how easy it is. This is actually denim. And I'm just gonna pop denim right in there. I'm gonna fold it in half, place it under and the feed dogs on a serger are excellent. You, you don't have to lift the foot up. They'll actually catch onto it. That's kind of, again, a sewing habit of mine. And that's a double layer of denim. And it came out just beautifully. You can actually use this um, in fact, the rolled wave looks really nice by using it uh, to embellish your quilt. You can embellish things just like that with very simple, obviously you just fold your fabric in half. And if I wanted to create um, a row of these, I would just fold it again and fold it again. Let's try one, one more row.
And the key is keeping your fabric straight. I'm kind of pushing that around because I'm sitting at a funny angle. But just guide it straight and let the feed dogs pull your fabric. So there we go, our second row. And you've got that beautiful look. And it's just that simple. You just need to set your machine up and let your machine do that work. So that is it. That is as hard as a wave, as a wave stitch gets. I'm gonna move you back around to this, over at the sewing machine. Okay, so I hope that was fun for you to see. If you guys haven't ever surged, um, I absolutely recommend it wholeheartedly. It is just so much fun. It's really, honestly, very addictive because there's so many fun things that you can do to add on to your quilts and things like that. Um, on a different note, I am going to be listing uh, my next class. Uh, we just wrapped up our tray and coaster class, which is still available if you do want to take that if you missed it. It's permanently up in face. It's a Facebook group that I created. Um, so if you go in and you ask to be asked to join So Blessed Quilting and Embroidery and just let me know that you want to take that class, I give you access to either the tray class or the coaster class or both. And you can take it at your leisure. Anything you need to do, the designs and the instructions are all listed in those. So very easy. And like I said, it's at your pace because you can watch it anytime you want, stop it, reverse it, whatever. Um, but the next class is actually a tray class, which I'm very excited about. That's the sec or that's that's uh, the most recently completed program. Um, and when I say a sign class, I might have said a tray class, but it's the sign class, like a door sign. Um, and basically what you've got is just this beautiful sign. And you can hang it anywhere. And the neat thing is this this actual design will be offered to us at a discount on um, a bit of stitch website and it's got we've got our own little um, link to that and it's actually done she's given us a third off so it's generally a fifteen dollar uh, design with three varieties for ten dollars this is um, another stitch out of this I did not stitch out the flowers on this sign I did on this and I turned it into a actually a round stitch out what I'm doing right now I will show you what I'm super excited about which is the next sign this is the whole design in its entirety with the flowers and this is absolutely my favorite design that I have have ever stitched out there's just it's just everything about it is beautiful um, so this is our next class, and I'm going to actually list the dates on that on Facebook today, and that will actually be on the 16th of October at 10 a.m. PST, and um, it's going to be a whole lot of fun. If you cannot be there for that class, don't worry about it. You can sign up, and it will be available for you when you can take it. Um, and you just, all you need to do is send me, if you're in Facebook already, if you're a member, just either um, messenger me and I just need your email so that I can send you a PayPal uh, request. And then as soon as I receive that, I get you in the class, into the group. You can either take the class live with us, like I said, on the 16th, or you can skip it if you've got something else to do and you're busy and come back and take it whenever you want. So. I think it'll be, I know it'll be a whole lot of fun. I'm very excited about this project. In fact, this is another one. I've got two, in fact, I for, didn't tell you this. There is another aspect, which is a blank. So you can create any sign you want. And that's why you see a variety. Um, this is actually the Christmas sign. This is another, you can't see that. This is the other design that I did for Christmas um, that way and that's available as well. I haven't actually included that in this class, but if you'd like to get that design as well, um, we can work that out. So I hope you're having a wonderful day. It's been a while since I have um, filmed for YouTube, but I'm very happy to be back. I've been working on lots of other things, and um, now I have the time to today to be able to film. So have a wonderful, wonderful day, and I will catch up with you guys soon. Bye-bye.